This lecture is about the Fourier transform, concentrating on one-dimensional and discrete transforms. The reason we're studying this is that we want to represent images in the frequency domain, or Fourier domain, and understand the operation of filters in this domain. So what we'll be covering is the uh, Fourier transform itself, definition and properties, then focusing on the two-dimensional discrete Fourier transform, uh, then covering the convolution theorem, which says that multiplication in the frequency domain is equivalent to convolution in the spatial domain, and vice versa. And then uh, later, um, with this preparation, look at filters and applications, such as smoothing, sharpening, and enhancement. So recall that the Fourier transform, uh, or Fourier analysis, uh, was invented by Fourier. And the main idea is that any periodic function can be expressed as a sum of sines and cosines. This is called a Fourier series. So given enough terms, the function can be represented exactly. So this shows a sawtooth function. And what we show here is the first um, couple of terms of the Fourier series. So this is the first five sines and cosines which added together do a pretty good job of approximating the original sawtooth function. If you have enough terms, of course, you can represent the function exactly. So um, we're going to look use complex numbers uh, to simplify the representation of a Fourier series. So recall that a complex number is a combination of a real and imaginary component, where j equal minus square root of minus 1 uh, is the imaginary component. So we can think of it as uh, a point on a two-dimensional plane. We've got the real axis, the imaginary axis, um, and this is our, our complex number represented by this point here. So um, in polar coordinates, this is a vector of length c and the angle theta with respect to the real axis. So you can write it in this form here. So the key thing is that Euler's formula says that cosine plus j sine theta is e to the j theta. So that allows us to go from the explicit sines and cosines to the exponentials. Just some other preparation. Uh, the complex conjugate is defined as the um, complex number with taking the negative sign of the imaginary part i. MATLAB has functions to deal with complex numbers. Um, this is of type complex. We can do a complex conjugate, an absolute value, or take the angle theta. So the Fourier series then, instead of writing in sines of cosines, we can write it as a sum of exponentials of this form here. Just some more preparation. Um, the impulse function is helpful to understanding Fourier transforms. The impulse is defined as uh, this delta function, which is 0 everywhere except at t equals 0 when it's infinity. But we constrain it such that the total area integral of that is equal to 1. So the sifting property says uh, if we integrate any function multiplied by the impulse from minus infinity to infinity, we just pick out the zero term because delta is zero everywhere except for t equals zero. So we just get f of zero as a result. Or if we write the delta function as t minus t zero, uh, this term is zero everywhere except when t equals t zero. So again, we just sift out or pick out the um, term of f where t equals t zero. In the discrete domain, very similar, the delta function is defined um, all zeros except at the origin where it's equal to 1. Um, and we, can, we also have the equivalent sifting property in the discrete domain. So the Fourier transform is defined as the integral of a function f of x from minus infinity to infinity of f of x times e to the minus j 2 pi ux. So this produces a value for a new function, capital F of u, at the value of u, whatever we pick. Uh, 
the inverse transform, we can recover the original function by integrating f of u. And very similar, except we have a positive sign instead of a negative sign for the exponential. So we can think of um, x as being a spatial domain, because we're working with images. And u is a frequency domain, like a spatial frequency. We often write uh, a script f to mean the um, Fourier transform operation here. So if we apply the Fourier transform to small f of x, we get capital F of u. Or if we take the inverse transform to capital F, we get small f. So these two functions are called Fourier transform pairs. If you know one, you can recover the other. Here's an example. Let's find the Fourier transform of this simple function called a, a box or rectangle. So this function is 0 everywhere except between minus w over 2 and w over 2. So we plug that into the definition of the Fourier transform, which um, is easy to integrate. The exponential is just the exponential. Plugging in the limits, we get um, this difference of exponentials. And that we can recognize is an identity for uh, sine over uh, sine of a quantity over the quantity like that. So this function um, is well known, and it's called the sinc function. And we'll see it over and over. And it has this form here. So kind of a sinusoid, but with decaying lobes like that. If we take the absolute value, it looks like this. The discrete Fourier transform is uh, very similar, except we use summations instead of integrals. Um, so we're summing from uh, x equals 0 to x equals m minus 1. So we have m total values of the original function. And that's also how many terms are in the uh, or values are in the transform function. Um, note there's a uh, constant here of 1 over m in the inverse transform. So we can consider the function and this transform to be periodic. So if we have a function defined from 0 to m minus 1, um, we consider that as repeating infinitely um, in both directions. The special case of u equals 0, so uh, capital F of 0, if we simply plug in u equals 0 here, this term becomes 1. So we're just summing over f of x uh, over all values. So that's kind of a, a DC term, the total uh, energy of that original function. Just a note on units, how spatial units relate to spatial frequency. Um, so we can think of x as having length, say meters. Uh, frequency has units of 1 over length. Um, so if we have a function that we sample at um, these integer spacings, um, that actually represents a function sampled at these uh, points, namely f of 0, f of delta x, f of 2, delta x, etc. Similarly, we have the transform, and that represents frequencies at uh, 0 frequency, frequency of delta u, 2 delta u, and so forth. So the lowest frequency uh, of course, is 0. It's f of 0. That's the DC term. But the lowest non-zero frequency is this one, f of delta u. The highest frequency, of course, would be this highest term here. So the longest possible wavelength we could have is um, where we have a complete uh, repeating curve like this, like a sine, that would fit entirely within our m samples. So that represents the frequency delta u. So the, the frequency is just 1 over the wavelength, which is 1 over m delta x. So that can relate units of um, spatial um, sampling to frequency sampling. Here's an example um, in MATLAB of performing the 1D discrete Fourier transform. Um, just directly using the definition um, on the previous page, applying that to some input series that we create um, 
f of 1 through f of m. So if you plug in, let's say, the rectangle function like this, uh, note that I centered it around 0, so it actually straddles 0. Um, then the output uh, transform is this series of complex numbers. Uh, note that it's all basically all the imaginary parts are 0. So that's a special property of this um, um, rectangle function. Actually, any, um, yeah, the rectangle function. Um, and if you plot these real values, um, you get what looks like a sink. And remember that um, it's periodic, so this piece uh, is repeated over here. So centered around 0, it's a, it's a sink.